in preparation for my trip, I've started checking over my Defender. A long-term issue the last few years is the rear windscreen wiper intermittently works. So I've got to pull that off. I'm going to have to go disassembling and seeing what's going on inside just in case there's anything or whether it might just be dirt and you know, loose connections. Or it's a bit grubby with uh, several years of outback dust and, and grime uh, fitting, sitting on it. So I'll give it a disassembly, clean, lube and, and see if I can get it going again. really handy to buy one of these kits with uh, all the different types of security fittings and such. This one actually has some weird looking um, six pointed screws so I've got that fortunately. There's actually some moisture right in the bottom and starting to rust out uh, the bottom bearing surface. So I don't know how I'm going to fix that because that's looks like it's pressed in at the bottom. Uh, the grease is still reasonably good surprisingly and it's still quite moist and usable. And then the bushes here are starting to get a bit, a bit worn so I don't know how much life I've got left in those but um, put it all, clean it up, put it back together and see how that works out. Try using some inox down there to displace the water. Let's see if that helps. Just a warning if you do try this there's a tiny round disc right at the bottom which is like a a bearing surface uh, that fell out and it took, took the last 15 minutes to try and get it back in that's where that ball bearing rolls on um, but that's back in now so I'll put this back in and yeah try the next piece and see what comes up This grease is getting pretty old and hard, it's not the best, so I'll give it a good degreasing, feed out, re-grease and see if we can get a few more years out of it. In my spare parts kit, you see I always say carry an old toothbrush. It's really handy for cleaning things like this to get in all the little nooks and crannies and get out the remaining grease. I don't want to use water on this, so I'll just use the degreaser and then some uh, methylated spirits and inox and get that cleaned up, cleaned up and yeah, get it nice and tidy. I don't own any other grease other than this automotive bearing grease, so I'm just going to use that and see how that works out. It should be good enough. Everything's nice and clean now, degreased. So I should be able to put this all back together and test it up. Here's the harder part now to put these all back in. Slide that back together. resorted to using some sewing thread to tie them back on each side. <laughs> it's just impossible otherwise to get them to stay there. It's probably an easy way to do it, but I'm not sure what it is. But this gets me through at least. So I'll do a quick test of power, see if it works. working so it seems to be good. That's one job down that's taken a few years to get to just didn't have the area really to pull things apart and get the work done but we're working again now. One of the other things that's been giving me trouble is the rear wheel carrier it kept jamming up the rear door so in the end I just had to pull it off I just didn't have time to, to fix it so that's the next job to get done. Another couple of hours has passed and I got the rear tyre carrier finally back on after probably one and a half years of carrying the tyre around inside my, my wagon. Uh, took a bit of work just to tidy up the bolts and uh, 
move it around a bit to try and get it lined up. This bolt here was particularly hard to try and get to tighten up again. It probably took 15 minutes of fiddling to tighten it up, but for now it's yeah working perfectly fine again. Uh, the reason I took it off was I was trying to open it and the door would jam about here so there's something out of alignment that wouldn't let it open all the way. Uh, but that's finally fixed. It's another one down. Next thing is to fix the rear water jet for the uh, windscreen wipers. That hasn't worked since I got my conversion done. Now from memory, it was somewhere around this area. I think it cable got cut. So I'll play around, see if I can find the leak. Shouldn't be too hard, hopefully, to find. I know pretty quick, I'll start wetting everything. No success yet, so I've disconnected the hose to see if I can get some water pump up and I'm not getting anything at all. Um, and I tried listening to the rear pump compared to the windscreen wiper pump and there's very big change in sound. So I'm thinking it's not pumping any water through from the actual reservoir. So I might try first checking the pump itself and see if there's a blockage inside that and uh, see if that fixes it. Down here might be the culprit. One of these just might be blocked up. I'll test them both, see what works out. So in typical Land Rover fashion, while trying to take off this pipe, I ended up breaking off the little attachment, the spout that this thing slides onto. Uh, so that's gonna need a whole new motor now. And trying to blow through this pipe, I've disconnected up the top. It's completely blocked somewhere. I can't get any water through it. I've already disconnected the one-way valve to see if that helps. Uh, that hasn't done anything. So I'll have to keep tracking this up maybe replace the motor and some of this hose, see if that fixes it. I'm working my way through the spare parts kit now. Just trying to make sense of what I've got here. It's kind of hard to remember some of these things. Uh, I found these four bolts. I've no idea why I have them in my kit. <laughs> they may have been from my original winch from 2015 I had. They may have been spares, I'm just not sure now. Interesting to see other things I thought about, like, you know, bits of tube uh, for um, doing repairs on fuel lines if I need to splice two together. I've got the tube I can fit inside and crimp on. Um, yeah, another bits and pieces. Got the bonnet, the bonnet bushes for the hinges. Uh, I think back in the day I thought having a tire on the bonnet might cause uh, them to fail, but as of yet, three trips and nothing's happened so I won't take these anymore. I can just check them before I leave and it's something I can reduce. And just going through what else here I need to double check on the spare parts. All the different gas gaskets and washers for my bearing kits, making sure they're still there. And of course going through the spare nuts, washers, bolts, make sure I've got the right types for the car because I did use, I use a few on the last trip in uh, 20, 2019, so I'll go back through those and recheck, and then just replace some of the old stuff. And I saw some of these tubes of various repair equip, repair goo and stuff are probably uh, it's nearly nine, ten years old now. So, geez, it's, it's, I had these on my first kit. That would need some checking. Got my spare tire repair kit as well. There's various bits and pieces in here. Some of these might be a bit off now, but you know, these goos and stuff are no longer any good. They've expired quite a few years back. But as of yet, I've never had to you know, do any tire repairs. I've just had you know, very good luck, I think. Um, 22 months of travel and not a single flat tire. So I'm pretty happy with the result. And for now, I guess I'll still keep, keep it in the kit because you know, one day I don't have it. It's probably the day I'll destroy a couple of tires and I'll need to do some emergency repairs. At least now I can keep mobile. That's what's next on the list. Going through the electrical repair kit. So I've got my various wires here, crimping tools, different types of tape for different purposes. Self-amalgamating tape, which is extremely useful. 
and of course checking through I have enough of the right fuses other relays the spare parts and all the bulbs have still got left on the car so I've all got those pretty good keeping a note of what needs to be replaced and see, there's always some sort of 12 volt gremlin that comes along enough corrugations tends to rattle something in the loose or or fry something so we'll get that going as well of course having all the parts and pieces is good but is that one extra thing you need to have is that imagination of how to fix something so I've got this t-shirt here WWMD what would MacGyver do so it's pretty fitting for when I'm traveling out bush got enough bits and pieces that I should be able to MacGyver some sort of fix and that usually that's what's happened so far so yeah just keeping that right mindset and just thinking outside the box and you can generally keep an old car going uh, as, long as, it's, as long as it's something not super major but hopefully you would have checked those over before departing or you change your plans and get to a town as soon as you can these bolts apparently came from the fuel lift pump kit so that's why they're in here spare replacements here's one of those useful little tools that I added to my kit some time back and I think it did get a bit of use just for helping to loosen up really tight bolts works with the standard butane gas canister for my stove fits on top nice little blow torch so yeah pretty handy I'm checking through the first aid kit as well it's probably 10 years old now so most of these things have passed their best before date but you know it shouldn't really matter they're all pretty well sealed still and being clean and dry inside the box I haven't really used much either. Most would be uh, a few adhesive strips or a little probe or something for splinters. I've been pretty lucky with my trips. I haven't had any real injuries at all. So, you know, there's only a few extra things like insect repellents and water treatment tablets just for there, just an emergency. But I'll go through and recheck these and repurchase what I need to just so I've got it on board should I ever need it. I've stripped the linen off my bed, so I'd give this a good wash along with all the inner liners for my sleeping bag. This is how I managed to extend the comfort rating of my sleeping bag so I don't have to have so many. They're extremely useful, the different ones for uh, different temperatures. So I've got like a regular, I'm sure I've got a basic inner liner for summer. Sometimes I used to just sleep inside this and not even have a bag because this was sufficient um, comfort. See, there's a couple different ones here depending on uh, how cold it is. This is the coldest version one. Add that inside my winter sleeping bag and it's really nice and toasty. I'm still tracking down this hose issue for the rear windscreen wiper and I finally found it. Just up the top here where it goes under this new flashing. Turns out we must have crimped it when putting the roof on. So it's, it's completely flat and crushed here. So there's no, there's no reason why I couldn't get anything through it. So I have to replace some of this here. Everything else is pretty good. Purchased some new silicon hose. Uh, they didn't have any rubber stuff in stock, so I'll try and put this in. It's meant to be a bit better quality than the standard rubber. I'll see if this is an easy job or whether I have to pull part of the dash off because it sort of winds in around and, uh, and comes out through a grommet. So I'll have a go and try and repair as much as I can just to make it a bit better for the future. Thankfully it's easily accessible. I should be able to pull this out and put the new one through. Easy access that goes up through here, folds out up along the gate pillar and then up into the top. The new three metre length makes it most of the way up into the roof, so I'll be able to cut out some of the old stuff and just make it neater. I've ordered a new one-way valve as well as the pump, as the previous one-way valve I couldn't seem to blow anything through either either way, so I'm guessing that may also be faulty. So it'll be a good overhaul for the rear system, and the see by how old some of these cables are. I think this is still the original Land Rover 1, parts and pieces. And a few other additions along the way. So, 
should be a lot better now. It blows all the way through. So it's working. Just need the new pump and get it back together. I'm checking over my toolkit as well because a few things have ended up in the house and I needed tools. Let's make sure I've got everything again. Got my original spanner set. I bought that back in 2006. One of the first things I bought when I got my Defender before I headed up to Cape York. I think it's finally starting to wear out and some of these slots now no longer hold the hold the spanners in so it might be time to try and find a nice canvas unit online. It's good to get something a bit better. Keep them neat and tidy. Yeah, a few things there. I noticed my ratchet was running a bit gritty and not flicking back and forth very good so I've disassembled. I'll give that a degrees and clean as well. Relube. But make sure everything running nice and smooth then. bought a new baker's tin. Uh, the old one started losing all its, its non-slip uh, coating. So if you're looking for one for a travel buddy oven, I found one that's called Baker's Secret. He, uh, it's a loaf pan, you can buy it from Spotlight. It fits in perfect size. So pretty much this lip fits in here. And he got about 14 millimeters extra space in the door. So if you could find one a little bit bigger, you've only got 14 millimeters of space left, but that's, yeah, just the right size for that oven. I bought some new paracord, which is really useful as a clothesline as well as just general cordage. I'm checking out my solar panels to see if they still work. I've had, had some issues with them over the last few years. I think in 2020, 2021, the top layer of film peeled off and had failed. Um, and then since then I've had, looks like a few of the cells have burnt out. So they've actually been a pretty big disappointment for the money, amount of money I spent on these panels. I thought they were a really top quality notch um, brand, but apparently not. So at the moment they're only getting about 13.3 volts in the full sun and there's nothing much going on with the DC to DC charger. It's not accepting any charge from them. The, the lithium battery's quite flat. I accidentally ran it flat um, a few weeks ago by leaving an LED light on and I was working on the car and that drained it down. So I'll have a play with these and see if I can get any, any power coming off them. Otherwise that's a, a pretty major um, yeah, setback for me on the solar panel. I really need these to keep the fridge running. I'll see what I can come up with. I'm going to try and desolder these two panels. They're currently in parallel with the one cable going into the DC to DC charger. I'm hoping that maybe the one panel with the fault, with the burnt out cell might be causing some sort of issue for both of them. So I'll check each of them individually and see if they're working properly. If not, they might both be uh, past their prime. I ended up using this blowtorch, it was taking too long. My soldering iron wasn't quite powerful enough to heat it up, but this got it done pretty quick. So I've checked again, and yeah, this driver's side panel is completely dead, and this one's 13.1 volts. So that's a shame. Looks like I might have to figure out how to remove them and see if I can find some cheap panels in the meantime. eBay probably has some really cheap panels I can just throw on top of these. If I can't get these off easy enough, they're all kind of stuck down with double-sided tape. They're probably pretty well glued down. Let's see what I can figure out. Worst case is I just buy a a fold out unit and plug it into my DC to DC, at least just have a charge when I'm sitting around camp the rest of the time. My alternator can charge the lithium battery. Ah, yeah, it's a disappointment. Thankfully there's not too much damage done to these polycarbonate strips, they seem to be mostly beyond okay. There's a couple that did sort of start to fracture and break, but the rest of them are pretty well still mounted in place, so I can probably reuse these with another panel. 